Well, good morning, everyone. It's really good to welcome you this morning, whether you're here, whether you're watching us on video. We're going to begin this morning as we uh, consider God's great faithfulness to us in that hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. So let's stand while we sing. It is good to see you all this morning and it is good that we can join in worship and in prayer together. And so we are going to uh, come together now and pray. And uh, we're going to start as we did last week with the Lord's Prayer. I decided to, to, to start our service with the Lord's Prayer and then focus each week on a particular line or phrase from it in our prayers. So last week we looked at hallowed be thy name and this week we're just and, and God's kingdom coming and this week we're just going to think about God's will being done. So please join me as we pray and we begin with the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Our Father God, we come this morning to hallow your name and to remember your great acts in the past. Father, we look back as we read in scripture of the way that you created this world. Lord, as we look at it, we are in awe and wonder as we see the, the tremendous detail that there is uh, in the smallest things. And then we see the huge things, the mountains, the oceans, the skies, the clouds, Lord, all your creation. And Lord, we are amazed that we know that this was done at a word from you. You said, let it be, and it was. Oh, Father, how wonderful is your creation. We think back, Lord, to when we see the escape from Egypt in the Exodus, the way that you led your people out of that place uh, through miraculous ways through the sea. We read, Lord, of how you lead, led your people uh, through, the, uh, through the times, times of wandering, and Lord, times of prosperity, time of moving into the promised land, the way that you provided for their needs. We thank you, Lord, that you sent your word through the prophets. And Father, we read the words of the prophets there, and we see that they were valid for those people there. But equally, Lord, they speak to us now. And we thank you for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, the one who came, who left heaven to come to this earth, to die on a cross in our place. Lord, that we might be forgiven. And Lord, this morning we come to consider what should be our response to all that you have done. And Father, our loving Father, it is that we desire to bring you our praise and our worship. Lord, we do that as we sing, but primarily, Lord, through our hearts as we focus upon you. But Lord, through all these things, run the thread of your love and your amazing grace, but also, Father, of sin, through the fall, the way that people went away from you, through the disobedience of your children and the need for Christ to come. And Lord, still today we fail. But Father, as we come to confess our sins, we look for your forgiveness. We ask you to forgive us through our Lord Jesus Christ for our failings, things said and not said, for things done and not done. But Father, this morning, we think about that phrase, your will be done. And Lord, we pray that in our land, as people turn and return to you. We pray, Lord, that as, this, as we go through these difficult times, times, Lord, of, of an economic crisis for so many, Lord, that people might feel that they can turn to you for help. Lord, that, that, that they can turn to you for, for, for the lifting that they need at this time, for the encouragement. We pray, Lord, that your will will be done in our church. Lord, as we seek to love you and as we seek to love each other and the wider community, Father, we pray that we might seek your will for our fellowship. Lord, we pray that your will might be to build this church in this place, Lord. We remember that Jesus said, I will build my church. But Lord, as we look back, look into the words of Revelation as well, we see that if we are unfaithful, if we do not follow your ways, Lord, you could remove the lampstand. Lord, please, may your will be that you will build our church. And that might be the desire of our hearts to share with others. And we thank you, Lord, for every opportunity that you are giving us to share with others and pray that we might take them. And we pray, Father, too, for your will in our own lives. Lord, that what we do, we will seek your will. Lord, we know that your will is for the best for us but we need to continually seek your will, day by day, hour by hour. And Lord, whatever you reveal to us to live that. And so, Father, this morning, as we prayed, thy will be done. We don't want that, Lord, to be just words that we say week by week, but, Lord, to be the desire of our own hearts. And so this morning, Lord, as we've come to you, as we bring you our praise, our worship, as we listen to your word proclaimed, Father, we ask 
please, will you speak to us? Please, will you encourage us? And please, will you give us all that we need to respond in whatever way you call us to? In Jesus' name, amen. And we're going to sing two more songs. Uh, first of all, we're going to sing the one that we were singing before, the beautiful song, I cast my mind to Calvary. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. And then we're going to exalt the name of Jesus, with Jesus is exalted to the highest place. So let's stand ready to sing. I cast my mind to Calvary, and Jesus is exalted.
in prayer then as we pray for the younger ones before they go out. Uh, Father God, we thank you for the way that those songs just brought our mind to the time when we can be with you. Lord, when we can be transfixed on the face of Jesus. What a time, Lord, that is going to be. But for, for now, Lord, we pray that we will run that race that you give to us in the way that you call us to. And with that in mind, Lord, we pray that as the younger ones go out now, you will show them how you want them to live their lives for you at this time. Lord, draw close to them, we pray. Help them to understand whatever you are going to say and be with the adults who go with them. And Lord, we thank you for the, offer, the opportunity to give to our offering again. Accept our gifts, Lord, and the love of our hearts as we bring them in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going this morning to uh, continue our uh, series on the letter of John, John's letter, and Anne's going to come and bring our Bible reading for today, and it's into 1 John and chapter 4. It's starting at verse 7. <clears throat> Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world, that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us of his Spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Saviour of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do 
with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. Thank you. We're going to look at that in a a, a moment or two. We're going to sing a song, first of all, that I find really encouraging to sing. And it's a song, All My Ways Are Known To You. Because everything that we do, God knows. He knows our ways. So let's stand while we sing, All My Ways Are Known To You. Let's just pray. 
before we look at the word. Father God, you know our weaknesses, you you know our faults. And Lord, you know everything about us. All our ways are known to you. Lord, you know that sometimes we do things and we omit to do things. And Lord, forgive us. But turn us now in our, in, into your word and help us to see whatever you have got for us, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. When uh, we were teenagers, we used to be at the church youth club. And uh, we, I think some of us were a bit uh, jealous of Anne. Uh, she didn't know I'm going to say this. Because she always had the latest record. She was the one who used to bring the latest record to play. She also used to bring her dance set record player at the start until we bought our own. And we were always a bit uh, jealous of her. Um, I'm glad she came to the youth club. Uh, not just because she bought the records. <laughs> but there we go. Um, and the one thing I always know, noticed is that whenever we got the latest record, it was on over and over and over and over again. Can you remember that? We used to buy, especially if you bought a single, you would, for those who don't know, a record was a precursor to a CD, which is a precursor to downloading from Spotify. But a, si- a single was 45 RPM, 7 inch, one song on each side. I remember when we first got them out, Martin said to us, how many songs are on it? And we said, one on each side. He said, what? And so we used to, when you got that, you listen to it again and again and again. And if you got one of those multi-changer on your record player, you could lift it up and it just kept playing. Can you remember? And we used to say, change the record. Change the record. And when somebody always keeps saying the same thing, That's where we get that from now. Change the record. Some might say that about John's letter. And actually, a bit more old-fashioned, Tyndale said, John singeth his old song again. John singeth his old song again. And if you've been listening to this uh, series of uh, of readings, uh, of sermons, sorry, and when we had a Bible reading, you might have thought, haven't we heard this before? Haven't we heard that before? Well, I would say, please don't say, change the record, because that means I've had enough of it. Because I would say, can we get enough of hearing of God's love and ours? Can we really get enough of reading of that? And it was quite a long passage, and uh, I'm going to pick out four points this morning and just dig around a bit. And I know we're not going to cover everything, but four things. And the first thing that we're going to see is God is love. God is love. We need to see that. It's in verse 8 and verse 16. Uh, and, And I read this as I was preparing. This is one of the most profound statements of the whole Bible. And perhaps for many today, the hardest to believe. Now, why would it be the hardest to believe? And I guess that the person who wrote that is thinking that some people feel, how can God be loved when we see such tragedy? When we see people getting away with things. When we think about the illnesses that people are experiencing. When we think about the cost of living crisis. They are hard things, but we need to see the full picture. We need to see the full canvas, as it were. That's based on God's love for us. We do, though, go through those difficulties. I don't think anyone would deny that. But if he was just a God, if he was not a God of love, he would just let them, us go through them alone. But he doesn't. He promises to go through them with us. Things that we would never choose to go through, God chooses to. You know, if we think, I wouldn't choose to go through that, how can God love me? Well, he's chosen to go through it with you. He's chosen to give you his son, and we're going to look at that in a moment. And I guess that those who would question how could God be loved have not fully experienced God's love. 
You know, you can only know, can't you, what love is when you experience it for yourself. Because love is an action. Love is not just a word, it's an action. It's only when you've experienced it that you can know love. God is love. If, if ever uh, I've done a school assembly or we've talked to the children and all sorts or whatever and we ask what essential qualities should we have, loving is always answered very quickly. Loving, to love. And I would say, is love a quality of God? Well, I think the answer is that loving is, loving's a quality of God, but love is God's essential nature. It's not just a, a, a quality among others. God is love. Full stop. That's it. If you were in America, you would say, period. Full stop. That is it. Love is rooted in God. That's where the roots are. It will define the fruit that is being produced in us. Love is rooted in God. And that determines what fruit we produce. And of course, the fruit of the Spirit, the first thing is love. You see, when we love, the danger is that it is about the worthiness of the object or the one that we love. One of the saddest things, I think, is when a relationship ends. And especially if you hear that word, I just don't love him anymore because. Or I just don't love her anymore because. It may be something that they've done. It may be something that they haven't done. Or sadly, someone more worthy of their love comes along. But God's love is not about the worthiness of us. It's God's essential nature. If it was about how worthy we are, I know that I couldn't say, God must love me. It's not about that. Love isn't what God does. Love is what God is. That's why it says, God is love. Different to God loves. Does that make sense? God is love. God loves us, or he loved us, even though we were unworthy of his love, even though we were subject to his wrath. And this is an amazing thing, that although we are subject to God's wrath for all that we've done, it is God's love which turns that away from us. And that's how we can see God's love demonstrated. Love is rooted in God. He is the source of all love. He is love. And we find three more things in this passage, I think, about God's love. And about love. The first thing is we read of the ultimate love. The ultimate love. 1 John 4, 9 and 10. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. You see, the real meaning of love is found in the cross. In the previous chapter, John had written, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. Now, when John wrote this, he didn't put the chapter numbers in and the verse numbers. It was one letter. So it's not kind of, in that, le in that chapter I'll write this and in this chapter I'll write that. This is all just part of what John is saying. The emphasis is a little different, but the meaning is exactly the same. God sent his one and only son. Now take that in. God's one and only son. Jackman said, God had only one son and he was sent into a hostile envi environment. 
into a rebel world on a rescue mission to redeemers and reconcilers. This is love. We see this if, if we look back in the Old Testament to Abraham and Isaac, which is a kind of a, a, a precursor, kind of a, an illustration of what Jesus is going to do, really. And there we find that God says to Abraham, take your son, your only son, whom you love. He keeps piling it on, kind of. No doubt that is a forerunner to the cross. Where's the lamb? God will provide. And that goes on to what we've already seen in, in, in this letter and looking into John's gospel when John said, Behold, look, the lamb of God. Ultimate love comes from God and is found in Jesus Christ. The only sacrifice for sin. Paul said, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. John Stott said, no greater gift of God is conceivable because no greater gift is possible. There is no way God could kind of give a greater gift than his son. And so I would say, John, please don't change the record. Please don't stop singing that song. Stop, don't stop writing the same thing. Because can we ever hear enough about the cross? I cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. Can we ever hear too much that God sent his one and only son that we might have eternal life? Not because we are lovable, but because he is love. If we want to know what love is, don't look at ourselves. We can say it. We can try to demonstrate it. You know, people say, don't they? Say it with flowers. Say it with chocolate. Say it with taking them out somewhere. God's love is the ultimate love. The second love I want us to look at is fearless love. Fearless love. 1 John 4, 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Now, there are two kinds, aren't there, of fear. One is to be in awe, and that is the fear of God that we should have, to be in awe of him. But there's also being afraid of God in the way that sometimes we can be afraid of things in life. And the reason is because of a possible consequence. People might be afraid of dogs because they might bite them. They might be afraid of spiders because they fear that they can hurt or that they're going to affect us in some way. Certainly not in all of them. So what is this fear of, uh, this consequence that John writes of, the fear of God? He said it's the consequence of punishment, a fear of God's punishment, a dread kind of, a judgment and wrath. And that can come on people in two ways. First of all, we can be afraid of something happening because of something you've done or something that you haven't done. And of course, sin in this way. People are afraid, God will do this to me because this is what I've done. And we must not feel that this verse hints that, well, we can do what we want then. Not at all. But it is a sobering thought and one of warning for those that have not found forgiveness through Jesus. There is a need to be afraid. But there can also be a fear because we've not made any progress in our Christian life. Yes, we've come to Jesus, we've been forgiven, but we struggle with sin still. And there might be a particular thing that seems to affect us again and again. But the good news today is that when we are believers in Christ, there is no need to fear God's judgment. But it doesn't mean 
we can just carry on as we are doing. We must continually seek forgiveness and we must repent of our sin. But what, are we, what about if this morning you said, but I am afraid of God. I am afraid because of what I do. Let me remind you of chapter 3 and verse 1. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And then I love the, the, some of the, the words that uh, have really spoken to me as we've looked at this, uh, these verses in John's letter are the next ones. And that is what we are, John says. Children of God. You are a child of God. You have no need to be afraid. But verse 3 of that chapter does go on to say, and everyone who has this hope purifies themselves. So it's not that we can just carry on doing whatever we want to. But this verse uh, that we've just been looking at, uh, verse 18, I want to just look at how it's uh, put in the Living Bible translation. It says this, We need have no fear of someone who loves us perfectly. His perfect love for us eliminates all dread of what he might do to us. If we are afraid... It is for fear of what he might do to us and shows that we are not fully convinced that he really loves us. Isn't that a great way of putting it? Not fully perfected in love. It's much more understandable in a way that we are not really convinced that he loves us. If not, go back to the ultimate love that we just looked at. Go back to what Jesus did on the cross. John will not change the record. He will not sing a different song. He says, this is how God showed his love. This is how we know what love is. He sent his one and only son that we might live. And what John writes this letter for, I believe, is that we might be fully convinced that he loves us. That's what he wants us to be, to be fully convinced. And the fourth thing is commanded love. Commanded love. Verse 21. He has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. Isn't it great to keep reading that God loves us? Isn't it great to keep reading how much and how God has shown us? So we also should expect to be continually reminded that we must love each other. And again, John's playing that same record that he's played again and again and again through this letter. Why do we love? Verse 11, because he first loved us. Since God so loved us, we ought to love one another. <clears throat> Verse 20, whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or a sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. You know, in a way, it's quite easy to say, isn't it? Yes, I love God. Of course I do. Especially when it doesn't cost us anything. And John makes it clear that if we do not love one another, we can't love God. However much we might say we do. He says you've not seen God, but you've seen your brothers and sisters. If you don't love them who you can see, how can you love God who you've not seen, he says. The New Bible commentary said, to affirm one's love for the unseen while failing to love the seen is to enter the realm of fantasy. I love God. God. So if we put those things together, the real test of that is how do we treat one another? Well, we are commanded, and notice not suggested, that we should love one another, not just a good idea. In a moment, a few minutes, not too long, don't worry, we're going to sing the last hymn. And we're going to be singing these words, I am so glad that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that our Father in heaven tells of his love in the book he has given. 
That's what we've been looking at. But as we sing that, the person next to you is going to be singing it as well. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. They'll be singing and meaning the same thing. So we're saying that this person says Jesus loves me and this person saying Jesus loves me. So how can we accept God's love for us but not love the next person who God loves the same? That's the question here, isn't it? How can we accept God's love for us but not love the next person who God loves equally? Well, we've covered a lot. And there's a lot that we haven't covered as well. I just want to finish as we look at verse 12. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. God's love is perfected or completed when it's reproduced in us and when we love one another. As we experience more of God's love and more of the indwelling of the Spirit, we will want our, our fellow brothers to be loved by us more fervently. It just follows on. A few couple of months ago, I wrote in the newsletter about the, the, the sink blockage that we had. And uh, it, it, it was in a pipe. And it was the pipe that was the, wa the waste to the, to, from the sink to the, to the waste pipe. And there, the reason of that pipe is to let the water flow through it. <coughs> and it will always have water in it, but it's going to be new water constantly as it flows. And the purpose is to let it flow through. What happens when it gets blocked, well, the problem is that nothing flows through it and the same water stays in it. There's nothing different flowing through it, nothing fresh. That's like us and God's love. Because our purpose is to be like that pipe and let, let love flow through us and out to others. You know, it's not this morning about God's love flowing into us here and that's it. It's about flowing out. It's good that the doors are open in some ways because it's about flowing out as well. But it's not stagnant water. It's beautiful, fresh water. The water of God's love flowing into us. But if a blockage occurs when we aren't loving others, firstly, they're not experiencing God's love through us. And we won't be able to get a fresh experience of God's love for ourselves. Fortunately, we bought a tool for the blockage. And we just put it in, turned the handle, and it flowed again. It flowed again. Is there a blockage? Well, I'm glad that John hasn't changed the record, aren't you? I'm glad he's got it on auto change and just keep playing and playing and playing in a way. I'm glad, as Tyndale say, he singeth the same song. God is love. He's very being. He showed the ultimate love, a love that means we've got no need to fear, but a love that he has commanded us to show to others and the way that we see God's love now. Let's pray. Father, I, I thank you for John that he, yeah, he just kind of play the same record and sings the same song over and over again about the way that God has demonstrated his love to us and we need to love one another. Father, we thank you that you are love. That's it. You do love, but you are love. We thank you that you show the ultimate love. We thank you that it's a love that means we've no need to fear. But Lord, we want to be able to fully understand and comprehend. And we acknowledge, Lord, that it's a love that you've commanded us to show to others. 
and the way that we see and others will see your love now. So Lord, flow your, make your love flow into us, Lord, we pray. Remove any blockages that there are there, Lord, that we might let that love flow out, Lord. And help us to understand that when we let that love flow, then we're going to experience more of your love. Thank you, Lord, for your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's sing that song. I am so glad that our Father in heaven tells of his love in the book he has given. We've just been talking about it. It's all in here. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. This is the dearest. Jesus loves me. And as we sing it, let's remember that everybody else is going to be singing it as well. And so as they acknowledge that Jesus loves them, let's realise that we need to love them too. So it's, I am so glad that our Father in heaven, let's stand while we sing. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Let's pray together as we close. Lord God, we thank you for your great love. And we pray, Lord, that we'll never stop singing that song or playing that record, as it were. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Lord, give us a love for reading your word of how much you love us. And Lord... We pray that we won't wander away this week. We'll stay close to you, walking the narrow path, but singing that same song. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us both this day and forevermore. Amen.